In this video, I'm going to take a look at just some more examples with limits at infinity. I'm going to assume that you've already been working with limits at infinity and that you know that if you have a rational expression, you can divide through by that highest power of x in the denominator and that you've had some experience with this. We're just going to kind of take a look at a couple different examples just to give you some more examples in case you're needing to see some. In this first example right here, I've got the limit as x approaches infinity of a rational function, and I've got 2x plus 5 in my numerator. I've got a 3x squared plus 1 in my denominator. Okay, so first off, you should always look and do a direct substitution to make sure that you need to do further work. Okay, so if I plug infinity in here, I'm going to have infinity times 2 plus 5. That's going to go to infinity. If I plug infinity in here, I'm going to square infinity times 3 plus 1 more. I'm going to have infinity on the bottom. So I definitely am going to have infinity over infinity which is an indeterminate form. So that means I do, do have to go one step farther and do some more work be able to, before I can find that limit. So I'm going to take a look at the highest power of x in my denominator, and I see it as an x squared. All right, so that means that I can then divide through by that highest power in that denominator. So then I could do this as the limit as x approaches infinity of a 2x over an x squared plus a 5 over an x squared, all over a 3x squared over x squared, plus the 1 over x squared. All right, my next step, I'm then going to go through and I'm going to simplify everything that I can. So I've got the limit as x approaches infinity. All right, taking this term right here and simplifying, I've got an x in the top, I've got two of them in the bottom. So that's going to become a 2 over x. All right, this one cannot be simplified, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that as x over x squared. All right, and in the denominator here, my x squares are going to cancel out, so I'm going to be left with a 3, and this one cannot be simplified. So I've got a 1 over x squared. All right, and then like I said, if you've been working with these limits as x approaches infinity, then you're going to know that anytime you've got a real number on the top and you've got an x to some power on the bottom, then and x is going to infinity, then these terms are going to go to 0. So this term is going to go to 0, this term is going to go to 0, and this term is going to go to 0. Okay, so it makes doing this limit really easy. I'm going to have then a 0 in the top, and 3 plus that 0 in the bottom, I'm going to have a 3 in the bottom. So 0 divided by 3 is 0. So a real um, nice little example of how you divide through by that highest power of x in the denominator. Okay, now for our second example here. Uh, I'm going to kind of take a little bit of different approach here. We're going to be doing these limits at infinity and negative infinity, but with a little different purpose here. All right, um, it is worth noting that some functions may approach different horizontal asymptotes to the left and the right. If you are working on some curve sketching and you're trying to find the horizontal asymptotes and you know you, you can't do it, it's a little struggle there, you've got to remember that taking the limit as x approaches infinity of the function you're working with and taking the limit as x approaches negative infinity of the function you're working with will give you those horizontal asymptotes. And you can't just do one. You cannot just do the limit as x approaches infinity because, in the, like what I'm trying to point out in this example, they could be different. You know, your horizontal asymptote, you could have one horizontal asymptote to the right and then a different one to the left. So you really do have to, if you're trying to find those horizontal asymptotes and you're wanting to use limits at infinity to do it, you've got to try both x approaches infinity, x approaches negative infinity. Okay, now on this one also, all right, these um, are not really rational functions. I still want to be able to use that dividing through by the highest power of x concept. All right, but what I've got to remember here, or what I've got to look at here, is that obviously x is greater than zero here. As x is approaches infinity, x is greater than zero. All right, so you've got to, let's just try to write this out. Um, for x is greater than zero, all right, um, I've got in the bottom here, I've got the square root of x squared, okay? Well, the square root of x squared is an x, okay? So that means I can divide the numerator by x, all right, and then in the denominator, I don't want to show an x because it's got a radical in there. So I'm going to want to divide the denominator by the square root of x squared. But they're the exact same thing. All right, so then here, let's do this since we know that. So um, divide numerator 
by x and denominator, I'm going to run out of room here, denominator by the square root of x squared. All right, and but you've got to realize that you really are still dividing through by that highest power of x in that denominator. Okay, just kind of looks a little weird there. So then let's do that and then see what we're going to get here. I'm going to have the limit as x approaches infinity. So on that numerator, I'm going to have a 3x over an x minus a 2 over an x. And then in the bottom, since I've got that square root, I'm going to go ahead and I want to leave it by that great big huge square root. So then I've got an, a 2x squared over, and I've really the square root of x squared, but it's going to look like I'm just writing an x squared there, plus 1 over x squared. Okay, now let's go through and do some simplifying here. I'm going to have the limit as x approaches infinity. All right, x over x is going to cancel out, so I'm going to have a 3. And then over here, can't do any cancellation, so I'm just going to have a 2 over x. Now down here, those x squareds are going to cancel out, so I'll have the square root of a 2 right here, and then this is not going to simplify, so 1 over an x squared. Okay, now at this point, all right, I can apply that thing of, okay, well, I've got x approaching infinity, I've got a, a real number on top, I've got a power of x on the bottom, okay, so then this term is going to approach zero, and this term is going to approach zero. Okay, so really then, what I'm left with is that 3 in the numerator when I take the limit, and then the square root of 2 in the denominator. Okay, and then if you wanted to rationalize that, do whatever you could with that. Okay, but basically I've got a 3 over the square root of 2. Okay, now, so I know that this function has a horizontal asymptote at y equals 3 over the square root of x as x approaches infinity, so far off to the right of this function. Okay, now, this one, I've got the limit as x approaches negative infinity. Now, it could be the exact same horizontal asymptote, or it could be a different value. Okay, so since um, I want to find out what's happening with this graph to the far left-hand side, find out if there's a different or the same horizontal asymptote. All right, I'm going to need to take a look at this and think. I'll do a little bit of thinking here. Again, just like we did up here, all right, this time for x is less than 0. So when x is negative, I'm not going to have, like up here, I had square root of x squared equals x. All right, for over here, the x is going to be negative. So really, on this, I'm going to have negative square root of x squared is equal to x because if x is less than 0, it's negative. I got to have this term negative, so it's going to be negative square root of x squared. All right, so I'm going to have to be, you know, applying that or implementing that when I do that dividing through by the highest power thing. All right, so what I'm going to do on this one is let's say so divide numerator by x, just like we did before, and the denominator this time by a negative square root of x squared. Okay, because I've got to take care of this as x is approaching a negative number. I've got to take care of that. All right, so let's work this one out. I'm going to have the limit as x approaches negative infinity. All right, now numerator, I'm going to divide by x. So I've got a 3x over an x minus a 2 over x. So that numerator really didn't change. But in this denominator, I'm going to have one, a great big square root there. Now, if I'm going to divide through by a negative square root of x, I'm just going to go ahead and throw this negative out in front because I, I'm going to do it on each individual term here. I'm going to have a 2x squared over, it's going to look like x squared, but it really is the square root because I'm on, all underneath that great big square root. All right, plus 1 over the square root of x squared again. All right, and then just can't forget to keep that negative right there. Okay, now going through and simplifying, I'm going to have the x approaches limit as x approaches negative infinity. All right, my x's will cancel here, and this term is not going to change, so I'm going to have a 2 over x. In the denominator, I've still got that negative out in front. This term right here, the x squareds will cancel, leave me with a 2, and then I'll have a 1 over x squared there. All right, and again, that concept of you've got um, a a real number divided by a power of x. All right, as x is approaching negative infinity, this term again will still go to zero. 
this term will still go to zero. And my only difference here is the negative out in front. So I will have, taking the limit then, I will have a three on the top and a negative square root of two on the bottom. So in fact, in this particular function, um, it does approach a different horizontal asymptote to the left. Okay, I think the hardest part for kids to remember is one, what to divide through by, you've just got to kind of memorize this, but when x is greater than zero and you've got a square root of x squared in the bottom, that really does simplify to x, so you're good there. It looks like you're dividing through by an x squared, but you're really not. You're dividing through by that square root of x squared, which means you still are dividing the top and bottom by the same thing. And then same thing here when x is approaching negative infinity. You've just got to remember, okay, you're considering examples where x is less than zero, it's negative, you got to throw that extra negative in there. So kind of a tough example um, and kind of hard to get that head wrapped around that, but once you do enough of these, I think it's going to go pretty smoothly and makes these limits really, really nice. So definitely thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.